Welcome. Sometimes that that live just hits you. We were just having a conversation deep in conversation. All of a sudden, Jorge was like, all right, let's go. Everybody had to straighten up. So here we are. Welcome. It's Wednesday. This is the first full week of shows. Can you believe it, Tyler? You missed the first show. I know Kai was in. He did a great job. One full week down. Check. How you feeling? It's, it's exciting. It's <laughs> exciting. Like I'm... <laughs> Like you said earlier, I'm, I'm ready for you to really just get comfortable and open up. And just like, <laughs> People at home are like, um, I don't know. Maybe she shouldn't get more comfortable than she is right now. You never know. Listen, I will get more comfortable. And uh, every now and then I, I say, you know, you know me on the show. I pretty much lay it all out there. But then I'll go home and my husband will be like, I feel like there's still like a two or three percent. You have it. And I said, all right, Jeremy, you know what? We're going to get there. And then we're going to see how you all react. Ah, so it's a good day. It was a great week. Thank you all for being here. Week number one, like I said, you guys are the VIPs. You come in here, you're excited, you're active. I want to put it out there at the end of the show today. We are going to, I'm going to answer either a couple of your questions or we're going to bounce off a couple of your comments. So please be active in the chat. Ask away. Something comes up you don't like, something comes up you do like. The most interesting comments, Tyler's going to follow them. We're going to share them at the end. So please be sure you're doing that. And we're going to come in hot today with controversy shocking you're like Jed not you never we would never expect that from you I know getting a reputation already what can I say let's talk obesity let's talk obesity new story Tyler has that for you from the post millennial we can put that up on the screen as we go along tiktoker blasts small ranch for saying she's above the weight limit to ride their horses so this TikToker, she has a lot of followers. She has 2 million followers on TikTok. No small feat. That's her in the photo. That's the ranch pictured. Her name is Remy Bader. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. She blasted a small horse ranch in Montauk. That's in Long Island in New York for telling her she was above the weight limit to ride their horses. And what she did is she put on TikTok a video of the ranch and she said, shout out to Deep Hollow Ranch in Montauk for making me leave because I weigh over 240. That's apparently her weight as she revealed. The video that she posted has over 1.6 million views. I'm sure it's even beyond that at this point. This is last I checked. And it has a lot of commentators, uh, comments on there harassing the small business. However, you also have people on there, I'm reading from the article still, that noted the potential negative health effects on the horse for carrying these obese riders. So I don't know a lot about horses. Um, That's not my expertise. (laughs) That's not my specialty. What I do know is what I Googled. And when I saw this, I immediately went and said, okay, is there a risk here? And you imagine that there would be, you know, a horse can can only carry so much weight. So what what is going on here? And when you Google it, you find out that yes, in fact, it is a fact that horses can only carry a certain amount of weight. So she was upset. And the question is, what did she expect to happen here, right? What did she expect to happen? She felt bad because she... The reality is, this is a reality. This is not me being judgmental. She is obese. She is overweight, right? This is a reality. You can look at the photo. This is a fact, okay? That's not good for her. It's not healthy for her. It's up to her. It's her own decision to make in life, how she wants to live her life, of course. But the fact is, is that she is overweight. And the ranch is not there to protect her feelings. The ranch is not there to make her feel good. Her, me, Tyler, anyone, not to make us feel good about ourselves, not to give us an ego boost when we show up and say, come on down, do whatever you want with the horses. No, the the ranch is there to protect the horses, to make sure that they're being cared for properly, to make sure that they're not in danger. That's their policy, whether it's a man, a woman, whoever shows up, that's their policy. So it's interesting to me that she went on the attack. I immediately thought of my child and I said, well, if I decided that I wanted to take Hartley to an amusement park and Hartley said, I want to go on the roller coaster. And he walked up and there's that little height requirement, you know? Oh, I hated that growing up. I always wanted to go on the big, the big girl rides. <sighs> anyway, you walk up to the height requirement. If you don't make it, you can't go on the ride. There's not a negotiation that happens. There's not a shaming of the amusement park that happens. You can't go on the ride because it's unsafe. Why? Because you could, if you're too small, you slip out and you could die. In this case, if you weigh too much, there's a chance that that horse could be at risk. If you go further in the article, actually, a couple of people weigh in on it. 
who do know about horses. And this is what happens. This is what they say. The National Riding Stables Horse Rescue, a nonprofit organization, Notes advice from Dr. Deb Bennett, PhD, who says total weight of the rider plus tack must not exceed 250 pounds. There is no horse alive of any breed, any build, anywhere that can go more than a few minutes with more weight on its back than this. Then John Cardillo, a conservative commentator, raises this point. You could cause internal injuries to the horse. You can cause spinal injuries to the horse. So this is just a matter of reality, right? Why should, what should the ranch have done? What should they have done? Should they have said, you know what? She's going to be upset. So let's endanger the horses. No, of course not. But we live in a world now where people feel like my feelings come first and you must acknowledge them, respect them and act accordingly. So she posted this and, and a whole bunch of people shamed the ranch as if they were supposed to make a separate set of rules for her. And we were supposed to pretend that this would have been a safe situation for the horses when the ranch, which knows their horses, doesn't isn't out to hurt people's feelings. Believe me, they would have rather had her come on. I'm sure they can charge for these things. I'm sure that they would have rather had her come on and been able to jo- enjoy the experience. If they don't want you to enjoy the experience of riding the horses, they wouldn't have a ranch and offer that opportunity out to people. That's why they exist. So here's the blunt truth. If she wanted to ride that horse, she w- there are two options. She would either have to lose weight and go back and meet the weight requirement. Just a fact. I'm not getting involved in feelings here. This is just a fact. Or she would have to say, okay, I don't meet the weight requirement. I'm comfortable with how I am. This is who I am. I guess I can't engage in this activity, end of story, and not play a victim and not try to harass and not try to make it like they were out to get her. So I want to broaden this out a little bit from this particular story to a conversation a little bit about obesity and what's going on in this country. Being obese is not healthy. It's not healthy. You are entitled to make that decision. If you, you know, you're overweight, you want, you like the way you look, you like the way you feel. Everybody has their, and also, let me be clear, this is not a conversation about personal preferences. Everyone has a type that they're attracted to. Everyone finds something different, beautiful. What I might like, Tyler might not like what we might like, someone else might not like. This is not about personal preferences in terms of what you find beautiful or attractive. We're talk I'm exclusively exclusively talking about health here. Being obese is not healthy. We saw during COVID-19 particularly that one of the comorbidities that put people at a higher risk for getting sick was obesity. That fact, not about feelings again. Cosmopolitan Um, ran a couple of campaigns this year on this topic. And they put a couple of covers out there. Tyler, I don't know if you have those. Uh, This is also from the Post Millennial, but these are Cosmo features. Here's some examples. There's an article that's titled Cosmopolitan Calls Obesity Healthy During the Pandemic of All Times, by the way. And it shows two covers where they actually say on the covers, this is healthy. And it features two images of women who are clearly obese. And it interviews them and and goes about this whole discussion about, well, you know, I've always been boxed out because I didn't fit, you know, the definition of health. Listen, again, this isn't this, this. This should not what Cosmopolitan should be doing if they really care about health is saying. And here are the images that you can see there. I see what they're doing here, right? They want you to, this is embracing everyone, make everybody feel good, make everybody feel, it's about feelings, right? This is about making you feel a certain way. Maybe you're upset because the typical traditional definitions of health show a lot of fit women, you know, show a lot of thinner women. Maybe that bothers you. Let it bother you enough to say, this isn't healthy. I'm going to do something about it. Every single person out there has an ability to do something positive for their health. It's a choice in, in many respects. I understand there are thyroid conditions. There are some medical conditions that come into play here that make things a lot harder. Obviously, for the vast majority of people, lifestyle choices play an enormous role in what goes on here. My concern here is that why is this being glorified as healthy? Why? Why? Why do we have to change the definition of reality, which is that being obese is not a healthy decision? We know obesity puts you at greater risk of heart disease. Obesity puts you at greater risk of stroke. Obesity puts you at greater risk of chronic illness, of of many things in life that not being obese doesn't. 
This is just fact. You can talk to, to, to doctors. You can talk to holistic doctors. You can, and you know it, right? People know this. This is a reality that people know. What happens is, is when you point this out, when you, when you look at images, these are the images that you've just seen. If you say something about it, you're called fat phobic. You're called hateful. You're called judgmental. When in reality, what I really want sitting here is I want magazines. I want the medical community. I complain throughout the entire COVID-19 pandemic. I, I do this sometimes, pandemic, because we need to look at the numbers on that too. We'll get to that. But throughout the entire time, I was like, where is the talk about health? Real health. I'm not talking about big pharma drugs. Coming to the rescue. Ooh, jab number 65. Still get COVID, but jab number 65. I'm talking about real health. I'm talking about setting up yourself for you're going to face viruses in your life. You're going to face bacteria in your life. You're going to encounter things. Put yourself in the best body you can to encounter those things. I'm talking about food, real whole food, not the synthetic meat that Bill Gates would love you to eat, by the way. I'm talking about real, you know, farm-raised meat. I'm talking about, you know, fruits and vegetables. I'm talking about dietary changes, exercise, meditation, stress. We all know that's a killer. We all know it, but... Very few of us manage it. I'm not good at managing stress. I do my best, but very few of us prioritize it in life. We just go through the grind of life. Why was nobody talking about that? So what I would love to see Cosmo do, if they're really concerned with health, as they claim, is to focus on this, to point out the reality that obesity is a detriment to your health, but there are things that you can do about it. You don't have to be a victim of that. You don't have to be a victim of anything. You can decide and, he, and we're going to help you. We're going to give you some tools. We're going to talk to doctors. We're going to talk to people, real nutritionists who really know what they're doing. We're going to break down what you could do right as opposed to what you're doing wrong. We're going to give tips. No, that's not what they did. Instead, they chose to glorify something that's not good for people. It's not good for people. Um, and again, this is not about, for me, this is not about visual appearance. I don't care. This isn't about visual appearance. And also, by the way, let me say, I would be having this very same conversation if you looked at some of the magazine articles and the, the photos that came out in the fashion business when I was really young. I don't know if you remember those really controversial gaunt photos of Kate Moss where she was like, looked really, really undernourished. That was the appearance. There are girls who suffer from eating disorders who are way too skinny. Let me tell you something. When I was younger, I'm going to share a personal story for a second. Um, I did some modeling when I was younger. And I started doing that when I was like 14, 15. And I was always, I had a little curve to me. I wasn't, I always had a little bit of a butt. Butt wasn't always trendy. Now it's trendy. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Finally, the booty. Thank you, J-Lo. Anyway, fashionable now wasn't always fashionable. I was little, but I had a little bit of a curve to me. And I remember going to a show, a modeling show that I got invited to. I was really excited. I was really young. And the woman was like, She's a little short, but also she would need to lose like 15 pounds. And I was very young and my mom was like, my mom went Brooklyn. By the way, when you go Brooklyn, that means you go crazy on someone. I will go Brooklyn here at some point. Bring Fauci on, we'll go Brooklyn. Anyway, my mom was horrified. And I went on, I spent a few months where I ate very little. It really affected me. I became really conscious it was before I got into exercise before I cared about wellness I was just like I there's something wrong with me and you know what I did I ate so little I was down to 95 pounds and when I went to a nutritionist ultimately she told me that I had shrunk my organs okay that's the other side of this I then, once I heard that from someone, something kicked in in my head. I joined the track team. I became incredibly passionate about health and wellness and food. Now, I mean, I eat like a 250-pound man most days. But that was a very brief period of my life where I fell subject to what something that hit me at a very impressionable age. And what I'm saying is this hits people at impressionable ages too. People, young girls see this and they're like, oh, maybe it's healthy to be. It's not. It's not healthy to be grossly underweight. It's not healthy to be grossly overweight. It puts you at risk. So this is not a commentary from me about looks. This is a commentary about health. And I'm tired of magazines and I'm tired of people with an enormous amount of influence like Cosmo 
making this about a woke cause or making this about feelings. This isn't about feelings. This is about wellness. And, you know, when faced with the last year and a half where you did have a virus that seemed to target people who were vulnerable, who had these comorbidities, you would think that it would snap everyone and say, wait a minute, enough of this nonsense. Let's just get people healthy. Let's figure out how we can motivate that, how we can be a positive force. Of course, you have to motivate yourself. You have to want it yourself. But these media institutions should be a force to assist, not to enable bad behavior. So listen, I always say this is a time for reality. And whether you're talking about obesity or whether you're talking about gender, or whatever we're talking about here, we're gonna be blunt and we're gonna be honest. So this is not healthy. This is a media game that's being played. Um, and the only person that really loses in the long run, they get a lot of clicks and you know, maybe people buy the magazine, they wanna feel good about themselves that day, they buy it. They're, the person who suffers really are the people who, who heed this advice. Um, and I shared that personal story with you because you know it's funny, I remember when I was on The View, <laughs> I wanted to talk about this stuff. There was a relevant topic, and I remember a, she wasn't a producer, I don't know what her title was. Really, her title should have been gets paid a zillion dollars and does nothing, but she's not there anymore. Um, but she was like, you can't talk about this. And I said, why? And you know what she said to me? You're fit. It won't be received well. And I said, first of all, I work my butt off in the gym, and I, deprive myself of, I don't eat crappy food, and these are decisions that I make because I care, A, and B, how dare you assume that someone would receive it poorly, you know, just because of what I look like. I found it so horrible, honestly. Anyway, I couldn't talk about it. I was told no. Well, I'm talking about it now. This is not about what I look like, and that's why I shared that story with you, because there's been times in my life where I've been someone who made a bad decision because of something that was said to me and it was an unhealthy decision, and I looked horrible. I looked like shit. I looked like I needed a burger more than anyone. So that's where it comes from. My passion for health and wellness is my passion for people. I mean, I feed my kid. My kid asks for like, he goes down the grocery aisle, he doesn't even know what half that stuff is, and it's my proudest moment. He doesn't know what any of the garbage food is. He's like, mama, carrot. I'm like, <gasps> you know, he ate the other night, ground up organic bison with organ meat mixed in. And he was like, I consider that a good day's work. So this is my life. This is my passion. Regardless, I've had it with media. And I wanted to open with that because obviously I've had it with media on many issues. But when it comes to health and wellness, I've really had it. And we're going to be digging in on that a lot. All right. Tyler was like, I'm sitting this one out. He was like, there's, and you know what else? Men feel like they can't they can't chime in on stuff like this because we train guys. My mom always said, you know, this whole thing with men where you're like, do I look fat? And you put on a dress, women don't want a real answer. And we train you to be like, you look amazing no matter what. That's bad, ladies. That's bad. My grandma, who lived to 102, was the best. She used to say to me, if you look fat in something and you ask, I'm going to tell you. So ladies, don't train your men to lie. Don't train your men to lie. Maybe you do look a little pudge in something. Maybe that day you want to look a little beefier. I'm just saying. Tyler, any comments? It's it's just strange. You know, it, it'd be nice if media could stop going from literal extreme to other extreme. Yeah. They go from, from what you said, Kate Moss, who's 85 pounds, to Tess Holliday, who's m almost morbidly ob obese. I mean, it's right. absurd. It, it just... It's interesting because the most popular person on the internet is Joe Rogan. I mean, he averages mm -hmm. 11 million views per episode, right? And what's yeah. his what's his message? Eat healthy, right. get off your ass, and go work out. And people crave that. And you know what's Absolutely funny too? What was really fascinating to watch? Because you're right about Joe Rogan, and I, I love his stuff because I don't always agree with him. He was like a Bernie guy. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't agree. There's a lot of stuff that we we would have a great debate, actually, but... What was interesting watching during the pandemic is that he was saying like his stance on the vaccine was like, do what you want, mm -hmm. you know, but people were like, he's, uh, he doesn't know anything about health. And oftentimes the people who were saying that if you put a side by side, you would have been like, oh, okay, I'm going to supposed to take advice from you and not this guy. Joe Rogan, he's ripped. He, mm -hmm. he takes food seriously. He takes fitness seriously. He does like, I've heard him talk about NAD therapy and IV drips that tell me he knows what detox means. 
Some Soup's of the got people- an eight pack, like 53. Yeah. That's hard. I work That's out. Hard at I don't have an eight pack. Let's just say that. <laughs> but it's hard. And this stuff is not easy, right? It, to make a decision to be healthy, it is not easy. My mom's working hard at it right now. I love her for it. I absolutely love her for it. She's so inspiring. She didn't grow up in that world where like exercise and fitness. I've got her on a path now. I'm so proud of her. But it's not, it's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. All this stuff, remember, everything you do like this is supposed to build you up. This Cosmo stuff, this is not going to build you up may make you feel better for a second it's like an ice cream sundae that you eat and you feel real good and then you finish and you're like wow i have the worst stomach ache i've ever had in my life that's what this cosmo stuff is so cosmo no nicer way to say it get your shit together all right we're gonna move on to dogs dogs there was a man (laughs) oh what does one say tyler how does one intro this properly a man spent fifteen thousand dollars on high-tech dog costumes to fulfill his lifelong dream of, and I say this in quotes, becoming a dog. That is him in the costume. That's not a real dog, Jed, you say? No, that's him. Okay, so funny, entertaining, also just a tad bit disturbing. I'm gonna read from the article. I never have my papers in order. That's something you need to know about me. There's a bit of chaos that goes in to the dream. All right, his nickname is Good Boy. (laughs) Because why not? The man as a dog. A Japanese man is going viral after spending more than 15K on a hyper-realistic costume so he could fulfill his lifelong dream of becoming a dog. What's interesting is uh, there's no quotations around the word becoming in this column from the New York Post. He didn't become a dog. Let's just say that. All right. Now, he has racked up more than 600,000 YouTube views since it was posted. And actually, I think it's more. I I checked. It's 1.8 million actually, as of now, 1.8 million views on videos. <laughs> he actually paid a company called Zepit. For those wondering at home who are like, I want to become a dog. You can too. 15 grand company called Zepit makes costumes for TV commercials and films. You could see how that would work. I mean, that could definitely look real in a TV commercial. Final product took 40 days and multiple revisions. Imagine comes back with the dog. Ugh, I don't know. The paws don't look quite right. I don't know. The teeth. I don't see it. I don't see. The fangs do not look real to me. Go back. Do it again. Can you imagine the revision process on that? Does the tongue stick out far enough? Exactly. Is the tail long enough? I'm not feeling enough claw. Okay. I've gone too far. Anyway, if you look at the images, maybe we can go. uh, Tyler, I don't know if the video is in here. If you find it while I'm talking, just feel free to play that video. I think the video is in here somewhere. Um, I can't see it. Oh, yes, it is. It is in here. There's a video of, of the dog. Oh, there we go. So that's him in the dog costume. And he, he doesn't just look like a dog. He performs as a dog. You can see. Um, very detailed. Look, heel, roll over. Perhaps he takes orders like a dog. I don't know. You'd have to ask his partner. I don't know. So let's establish a few things in this story. First of all, he's not a dog. He's not a dog. 2022 you have to say that so he's not actually a dog he did become a dog but he did dress like a dog that's point number one you're like Jed why they need to clarify sometimes you need to clarify it's all I'm gonna say my second point on this is why do we feed this stuff 1.8 million views what is it about us as a society are, are we a little sick think about I mean are we a little is it curiosity are you like whoa Is it like those TikTok videos where you see someone take slime and do crazy things with it and you're just like, for like, I don't know, three hours? Is that what's happening here? What is it that makes us stare at this stuff? Because you know that by going and looking at it and building up views, we encourage it. We encourage other people to to do these things because they're like, well, I can make money on YouTube. I'm going to be a cat. I'm going to be a cat that's that's not declawed. I'm going to scratch things up. I mean, you know, people get ideas from us from what we endorse. It's funny. In some respects, we can all laugh. We can all, but then, you know, five minutes later, we're like, the decay of society. Society's in decay. Meantime, you spend an hour watching a man dress as a dog heal. Just saying. All right. The other component of this is something people don't like to talk about, which is this is a person that's probably not mentally all there, right? This is not 
can we all just acknowledge that a well person probably wouldn't? Now, I know you all have your hobbies. I like to exercise. Maybe you like to dress up as a cat. I don't know. Tyler's just <laughs> losing it on the other side. <laughs> but it's true, right? Everybody's got things they like. We all got some weird quirks out there. But I think we can all agree that if you spend $15,000 and go through a full series of revisions on a dog costume to look like a dog, something may not be adding up. Okay, now this can get serious, though. It can get very serious because I don't know if you guys remember Catman. Catman was a guy who wanted to become a cat and got multiple surgeries. I don't know if you have that article, Tyler, if Mm -hmm. I gave you that one. Okay, I forget what I give Tyler the night before. Catman, the human tiger who enjoys climbing trees and eats raw meat every day. In that article, this is what it says. As obsession, this is old, but it's important. That's images as I'm reading. As obsessions go, this has to be one of the weirdest known to man. Someone who would voluntarily file his teeth, split his lip, and undergo extensive facial surgery to turn himself into a human tiger. His body modification operations included splitting of his upper lip, surgical pointing of the ears, silicone cheek and forehead implants, tooth filing, tattoos, and facial piercing, to which whiskers were in fact attached. He ate as close to raw as possible or at the temperature that an animal would be if it had just been killed. Obviously, we don't eat like that. You know, that's not... Okay. Now, this, the very disturbing part of this and the very sad part about this is he died... He died in 2012 of an apparent suicide, as it was reported. He was not a well person, right? This was someone who was struggling with something that was going on. Um, And I remember at the time that this cat man gained an incredible amount of fame. I remember seeing a bunch of media reports, television, like you just, people just wanted to spotlight him because it was, it was odd and it was interesting. They were like, oh, clickbait, clickbait, people will watch. All the media cares about is like, oh, clickbait, clickbait. Everything is clickbait. Oh, what can I do to get it? It doesn't matter if it causes the demise of a human or society. That's secondary or tertiary to these people. But nobody wanted to say the truth, which was that this was a person who was in need of psychological help and there was something, there was something wrong. He was not going to become a cat. This man is not going to become a dog. Um, And the reason I bring this up is because we are in a time now where truth has ceased to matter to many people on many issues. And I don't care if it's obesity and I don't care if it's and the risks associated with that. And I don't care if it's a a conversation about gender and biological men and biological women in sports and trans men in women's sports. I don't care what the topic is. The truth has ceased to matter. And people just now invent. They just invent And they demand that you comply and no one can ask real questions like, is this healthy? Is this sane? Is this person in need of help? What is going on? You're not allowed to do those things or you are flagged as, as I said before, fat phobic, transphobic, all the phobics. They're everywhere. They're coming to get you. And it's growing. It's growing. It's growing. And the result is going to be a population that suffers. It's going to be a population that suffers without proper help. And it's going to be a population. If you cease to to acknowledge truth in different areas, then the truth ceases to, I mean, then then everything just dissipates, right? Everything is, if everything is subjective, then there is no fact. There's nothing tangible to adhere to in society. It's like people who say, oh, reminds me of the conversation about the constitution. It's living and breathing. What does that mean? What does that mean? It is what you need it to be on a Tuesday. No, that's not going to work for me. Facts are facts. End of story. I'm tired of catering to this madness. People suffer as a result of catering to this madness. I'm done. Okay. Now that I'm fired up and angry, Tyler's like, I'm leaving. I'm out. She's going mad. I am. This stuff gets me really fired up. Again, this is a health and wellness topic. The health and wellness will always get the mama bear claws out too. Because my baby, you know, I want him to live in a healthy world where you can acknowledge things that are harmful and it's not, you know, I don't care about political correctness. I'm done. On that note, libs of TikTok. It's kind of all loops in together. I don't intend for it all to, but somehow it all does when I go to do the show. Libsoftiktok.com. You guys know libs of TikTok, right? They're on um, Twitter. They're on, they're everywhere. But I know them from Twitter. And what they essentially do is they post their, you know, conservative They post what people are actually saying, what liberals are actually saying. So they'll post, you know, images from liberals who post on TikTok and say things about what 
they're teaching in kids' schools and how they don't care about, you know, oh, I'm doing this even though the parents wouldn't like it. Ha, ha, ha. They post those videos. They post flyers from actual events. They're showcasing you what these individuals are actually showcasing of themselves. It's real people just talking. They're just saying, here. Anyway, leaked internal messages show Twitter employees were debating whether to ban Libs of TikTok. We have a column here. This is from libsoftiktok.com. I'm going to scroll through to the part. It's a Slack conversation that happened between Twitter employees. Um, it was shared with Libs of TikTok by a Twitter employee who wanted to remain anonymous. And they, they went through the process of verifying the names. This all happened on Monday. And if you scroll down, there's a part where they say, but if we deplatform, this is a conversation, but if we deplatform this account, we might erode trust in our platform from users who already think we're irredeemably biased against conservatives. We don't think we know. We see it. We see the bias. We see the censorship. It's not a think. We know. Someone else chimes in on the chat and says, I mean, we successfully deplatformed Trump. I don't think deplatforming libs of TikTok is going to cause a mass exodus, but I guess it may not be in our fiduciary interest, financially, they mean, to enact a ban on a high profile account right now. So this goes on and on, whole conversation about whether or not they should shut down libs of TikTok. Why? The libs of TikTok is not a site where they're going on. And they're distorting someone else's content. When I tell you they are pulling content verbatim, say you're a liberal, you're a teacher, you believe that you know gender ideology should be taught in preschool, you do it, you want to, you know, you have pride flags all over your classroom, and you're you're on TikTok and you're voicing how you feel. They pull that clip and they showcase it. That's not distortion. You have an event, you make up a flyer, drag, drag for kids, blah, 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 whatever it says, they post it. They are just showcasing what you're displaying. But of course, Twitter has a problem with that because these people are being exposed as wanting to indoctrinate children on TikTok. And Libs of TikTok is just saying, here, this is what they're doing. And that's so incredibly dangerous because Twitter says, well, this is not a becoming look once again for our movement, for our cause. We got to shut it down. Instead of saying the reaction should be, wow, there's a lot of crazy people out there in classrooms. Wow, these people shouldn't be teaching kids. Wow, that's nuts. Hmm. No, it's, well, that's going on, and we need to condone it, because woke ideology says that we must, says that we must, and I've been brainwashed, so I must too. So let's just ban the people that are exposing reality. It's just reality. They're showcasing reality to you. People in their own words. Can you imagine getting banned for showcasing people? Why aren't those people banned then? You ban the person who's showing you what well, is ban the original content then. I mean, what is, no, there's no common sense here. But there's an agenda, of course. Now, you remember when Trump was deplatformed, Trump said a lot of stuff. I agreed with some stuff I didn't agree with. Sometimes I thought this Twitter stuff was like unhelpful to him long term because it distracted from policy. That's my own opinion. You may feel differently. But we knew that they deplatformed him because they just didn't like him. It wasn't because he was inciting violence. If that were the case, Louis Farrakhan and Antifa in New York City and a whole bunch of other sites that were inciting violence would have also been deplatformed, but they weren't. This was about Trump because they wanted to silence Trump. Everybody knew that. You see it all the time. You see people deplatform. Ali Beth Stuckey the other day over at The Blaze was just, I think she was suspended for nothing, really nothing. Go against the grain, go against the narrative, you will be deplatformed. You saw during COVID 19. How many people, how many people were deplatformed for telling you the truth? That once that truth was acknowledged later by the CDC, all of a sudden it was okay. Okay. Interestingly enough, with the Trump stuff too, everyone talked about a stolen election for a long time. Um, I took a lot of heat because I was. I was saying, hey guys, I'm not seeing it in the voting machine tallies. I took some heat for that. What I wanted to talk about, there was a conversation to be had about a stolen election. It was a good one, too. And it was happening. What I wanted to talk about was not voting machines, which I, was, I just wasn't seeing the evidence there. What I wanted to talk about was what's going on with the collusion between big media and big pharma and big tech, big politics. What are they all doing together to try to undermine him? There's something way bigger than a voting machine going on here. And it was. It was a takedown. It was a takedown. 
No question. That was the conversation that needed to be having a stolen election. Not not all that other minutia. Everybody got caught up in the minutia of this, that, and counting. It wasn't about that. It was about what, what the setup was. It was a setup of like, we're all going to come together on a narrative. We're going to deplatform him. We're going to make, we got to blow this COVID thing up the right way. We got to make it, we got to put it on him. There was a lot going on that needed to be talked about that was not being talked about properly. So stolen election, yes, but not in the way, not in the way that it was played out. So what you're seeing is new platforms on the rise in response to this stuff. You know, you see I'm on Locals, Bela.Locals.com. That's a cool place to come visit me as well. It's a cool community. Um, You see Rumbles popping up. You see a lot of podcasts popping up. Everybody's worried about censorship. It's a real concern. It's a real living, breathing concern. Tyler, I know you work in this space. What do you think about this censorship that's going on? Is there, like, what happens here ultimately? Does this become... What happens in terms of the censorship game? Do they win I think or do they gonna, lose? I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Elon Musk and Twitter. Um, if, t- if Elon Musk is able to take over Twitter, I think you're going to see a lot more people, not even conservatives or right-leaning people, but people with money and common sense who are going to make moves on these big companies. Because, yes, Rumble's a, a great platform. It's big, but it's not YouTube. I mean, mm-hmm. YouTube is massive. Twitter is massive. Uh, you know, I tried. Um, I tried Parler. Uh, I tried. Oh yeah, Parler too. That's right. You remind me of that. Candace Owens actually put uh, some something about vaccines. She mm-hmm. went to Parler there because she felt like she didn't know where to put it. I, my guess is I didn't talk to her personally, but she probably was like, "I need this in a in a in a place where it's not going to be censored." Right. And I I tried Getter. I was we had Jason Miller in. Oh, Getter. He, yep. Yep. He verified yep. me on Getter, but I mean, those are echo chambers. They're not. Twitter is Twitter is an echo chamber to an extent, but you still have people that are speaking out. And you, mm. I think DC might be DC Drano might be back on Twitter. You're on Twitter. I mean, you have you have conversations and debates on Twitter. I don't think these other platforms coming up can ever match the size of those. So what I think you're going to see is a lot more people like Elon Musk that are stepping up and making hostile moves on these companies and ex, uh, forcing their their will upon these companies and saying because. Yes, people say you should repeal um, Section 216. Was mm-hmm. it Section 216? Right. Um, but the last thing I think we should do is have the government get involved. I think that's, that's right. a bad idea. I think it's on the private sector and those who have made hundreds of millions of dollars, like Koch brothers, Peter Thiel, you know, these kinds of people to step up and exert their power and say, listen, you don't get to do this. This mm-hmm. isn't how a functioning democracy works. And you're seeing people push back on this. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. For years, I used to say, I worked at Fox News, so, and I'm grateful for the opportunities I had there, but I was always like, where's the competition? Mm-hmm. Where's the competition? Like, every industry needs competition. You do a better job when you have competition. I don't care, education, whatever it may be, TV industry as well. I was like, where's the competition? Now you see Newsmax out there doing a little better. I think they just have like, Honestly, their whole lineup is like the old Fox lineup. It's like bowling, Greta Van Susteren. I'm like, whoa. Um, But I think it's going to be interesting where these platforms go. I think people are aware, increasingly aware of the censorship. They're pointing it out. Even people who aren't in media are like, what's going on here? Why is why is the I think the, the misinformation campaign on the vaccine opened a lot of eyes, a lot of parents eyes in particular, because now again, it was like, this 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 policy about the schools and the masking this was affecting their their babies, so they were they were, eyes were open in ways that they hadn't been before. Silicon Valley is powerful, big tech is powerful, and it is. I think Tyler is right. I think entrepreneurs out there, if you can create a legitimate, the challenge is to create a legitimate free speech zone where people of all different opinions flock to and actually engage. You don't want an echo chamber. That's useless. It's useless. And it's not fun and, and you're not gonna, it's not going to have longevity because you're not going to want to hang out there. So entrepreneurs out there, that's what's missing is a legitimate, thriving free speech zone where all different opinions can get involved, but where that active censorship in one direction is not happening and isn't very blatantly transparent. I mean, it's, it's honestly ridiculous at this point. And now these memos from Libs of TikTok, I think people are just like, okay, all right, chill, honestly. And I always say, you know, leave, leave the platform. But you know what? People don't want to leave because they there are components on Twitter they enjoy. I get it. I'm on there. There are components that are really exciting and fun in small doses. Remember, put the phone down and get outside every now and then, like I told you yesterday. You're like, Jed, don't tell me what to do. Just saying. Speaking of games, 
I need a little talk about dating. I dated, not a lot actually, we'll get into that. There was a woman, this story went viral. A woman, my husband found this one actually. He was like, I think you would like this story. And I did, my ears perked up. I was on fire last night a little bit. He's like, I didn't think you were gonna like it that much. I do. There's a woman who has tried to find her cheating boyfriend. She claimed that he was cheating. Of course, I can't verify that on Tinder. Her name is Monica. Okay, this is from Newsweek. I'm going to read a little. A screenshot of Monica's profile was shared in Reddit's Tinder forum over the weekend by an anonymous poster. Okay. If you go to the screenshot of her, let me see if I have the, do I have the screenshot? Do you have the screenshot? I didn't print here. Oh, there you go. Monica. And she says, ah, funny story. My man is just swiping on here and nothing more. Oh, he's just swiping. I guess that's what he told her. I'm just swiping. Thought I'd hop on and just swipe like he is. It takes two to tango, babe. Call me when you see this. Okay. So apparently her boyfriend, I guess she caught him. Caught. You know it. Everyone out there is like, there's been a moment of being caught or catching somebody, right? I've never been caught. Not a cheater. We'll get to that. Um, I guess he said, I was just swiping. Oh, were you? Really? Why would you be swiping? It's like, oh, I was just walking through the grocery store, just browsing. No, you don't go on Tinder just to hang out. Stop it. And I guess she found out and she decided, oh, I'm just going to do this too. I'm going to play this game. I'm going to go on there. I'm going to do what he's doing. Okay. So here's the thing. I don't know if he's cheating, like I said. I don't know what's going on here. But here's the thing, Monica. If you think your man is cheating, leave him. Don't do this. You think he's cheating. What you do is you say to him, hey, I see that you're on Tinder. What are you doing on Twitter? You don't get an answer. You're like, you're like, you know what? That answer doesn't work for me. So I'm just going to spend the day my, doing my own thing. You can go do your thing. I'm going to think about all this. Have a nice day. Shut your phone off. Go live your life. He will sweat. Beads of perspiration, like I always say, they will just, Tyler knows. Tyler's in the corner. He's like, she's given some good advice. By going on here and doing this, all you told me is that you're not going to break up with this guy. You're not. You're seeking attention from him. You want him to see it. It's fun and games to you. You're playing the game. But when he comes crawling back and says, oh, I was just swiping. Like I was just walking through the grocery store. You are going to accept that. You're going to forgive him and you're going to let him back in. Guaranteed. And guess what's going to happen if you do that? And if you treat it this way, he's going to do it again. And then he's going to do it again, and he's going to do it again, and he's going to do it again. So stop complaining if you don't take it seriously. So here's the thing. The way you get a man to stop doing that stuff is you don't tolerate it. Now, she may decide, someone may decide, I'm not saying that you can't reconcile. I don't know how you feel about cheating. For some people, it's like once over. For other people, they're like, I'll, you know, I'll let it go once. And then if you choose to forgive and forget, that's up to you. That's totally up to you, your relationship, not my decision to make. But I can tell you, if you choose to forgive and forget and you say, you better lay down the law and say, if this happens again and be believable, if this happens again, you are out. You are out. Men are like puppies in many ways. I'm not trying to say men are dogs. I love men. This is not supposed to be degrading to men, but listen, and women can be too, I guess. You know how when you have a puppy and you're like, you've got a treat and you're like, you're not going to get another treat, but they know you're going to give it to them. They know it. They know it. They sit there. They're, they just wait. And then you're like, okay. And you give them another one and another one. Okay. Men are like puppies. <laughs> They're laughing. The men in here are like, oh yeah, they know it. They know what's up. So you need to, you need that puppy to know <laughs> when I say you're not getting another treat, you're not getting another. When I say if this happens again, I'm done. I'll have somebody else by noon. Mean it. Mean it. And there's a big problem going on in society today because there's a lot going on we're going to get into with sex and how women treat sex and how that's a big problem. You need to, this is your temple. Okay. I've never cheated on a man. Let me tell you straight up. I don't care. You can go out there and talk to anybody you want that I've dated all like, I haven't dated a lot of people because that's another thing I didn't like to do, but never cheated on a man. There were times where I was with somebody hanging out. I wasn't feeling it. My eye was wandering. I was like, this isn't the right relationship for me. End it. I would say, listen, I'm sorry. I can't be here. This isn't for me. Something's missing. I got to go. 
never been a cheater, also have dealt with a cheater. Have dealt with a cheater. Let me tell you something. I dated a guy. I write about it in Do Not Disturb. You should read about it. Guy had a whole separate life in his phone. That was fun. That was fun. How did you find out, Jed? I looked. I looked. I know. Phone is private, this, that. Of course, now everyone's like, how dare you? I, I had reason to look. I had a lot of reason. Picked it up. I fought that battle for a while with myself too, with like, look, don't look, respect his privacy. <laughs> what I found, holy mother of you know what. There was a lot going on. There was a whole other career. It's a whole other girl. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't find that out and then absorb that information and go on a website and put like a cute emoji and be like, Haha, well, you have a whole other life, so I guess I'll go get one too. No. That would have told him that I was finding it humorous, that there was still, you know, some fun in it for me. No. You know what I did? I said, I'm done. Grab your shit and go. I'm done. And I was done. And that was it. I don't think he had ever been told that before because he was like, wait a minute, like for real? Two weeks later? I was like, yeah, actually, you've been deleted. Who is this? Actually, to, I, did, I don't know anybody's phone number. <laughs> I remember that he did text me and I was like, who is this? He thought I was putting it on. I actually didn't know who it was because he had been deleted already. That's how I roll. That's how you get some respect. You got to have my dad taught me when I was young. You cannot command respect unless you have respect for yourself. Ladies, never forget that. Don't put the goods out there so easily either. We'll get to that. All right. That's important, I think. Um, I think it's important culturally, too, like to talk about this stuff, about dating relationships, because when I talk about a society in decay, like a lot of people think I'm just talking about politics. I'm not just talking about politics. I'm talking about like the way we view our bodies, the way we share or don't share our bodies, what we teach our kids, the hypersexualization going on of everything when it comes to our youth, the technology. I'm talking about all of it. So we're going to put all of that on the table. It wouldn't be fair for me to, ju- you can't isolate politics. Politics is, is interwoven within the fabric of everything else. And fa- politics and politicians only get away with what we culturally allow anyway. It's, it's all like this. So we're breaking it all down. But this struck my fancy because I love when I see that. Woman's like, I'm over him. And then you never hear that? I'm over him, girlfriend. I'm over him. I don't even, and then she talks about him for another five hours. You know you're not over him. Stop. When you're over it, you move on. You get some cheesecake. You call it a day. You're talking about the notebook or something else. All right. That guy from the notebook. Good catch, by the way. Good catch. You can build me a house from scratch, man. Woo. Jeremy, you need to learn how to do that. Just saying. I love my man, but house from scratch, that would be like an eight plus plus. Just saying. He's at home watching. He's like, why are you going to share my business? How do they know I can't build a house? Now everybody knows. All right. The coup de gras today. The coup de gras. We always have a coup de gras. You know the coup de gras. My mom used to say coup de gras. That means like the icing, that little like cherry on top. You know when you have a cake and you're like, oh, the cherry. Okay, Trudeau. We're gonna close with Trudeau. Then we're gonna get to a couple of comments quickly. But Trudeau, I always talk too much. You're like, Judge. Shh, I have a question. Trudeau, bully Trudeau. <sighs> So we have a tweet from Trudeau um, from Monday. I missed this one because I was too busy watching Trudeau tell you that you couldn't have guns for self-defense, but only for hunting. Remember that? (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, um, I missed this one. Let's take a look at it. Tyler, you have that tweet we can put up on the screen? Mm -hmm. I've tested positive for COVID-19. I'll be following public health guidelines and isolating. I feel okay, but that's because I got my shots. So if you haven't, get vaccinated. And if you can, get boosted. Let's protect our healthcare system, each other, and ourselves. This isn't about Trudeau, although he turns my stomach on every possible level that I have in my body. Seriously, every one of them. But this isn't about Trudeau. The reason I bring this up is because I'm kind of exhausted from seeing politicians, political figures, celebrities. These, these tweets that are like, I got COVID for the 17th time, but don't worry, I'm vaxxed and boosted. I got 16 boosters, so I, I feel okay, but thank God I got the vaccine or I would feel a lot worse. Or I'm sick, but I got vaccinated. I would have been way sicker if I wasn't. Okay. First of all, stop. Everyone with common sense, a brain is laughing very, very vigorously, actually. I laughed quite vigorously last night when I saw this. I've seen so many of these. It's like, come on. First of all, let me just ask, how do you know how sick you would have been if you didn't get the vaccine? How do you know? Do you have a little like telescope into an alternate universe that you can see, well, this is me, 
now and this is me in my parallel universe where I didn't get the vaccine and I got that sick. You don't know. I had COVID right at the start. I wasn't hospitalized. I didn't take any, you know what I took? Zinc, vitamin D. I didn't take any, any pharma drugs. So don't, don't throw this nonsense out there like you know or you, you don't know anything about what would have been. Don't, don't throw your talking points out there. Secondly, get vaccinated, get boosted. People who do that, get vaxxed, get boosted. No, you have no business telling other people what to do. You don't know their medical history. The vaccine is not for everybody. The vaccine is not for everybody. There's people who are medically advised against it. Stop telling people what to do. You don't know anything about them. That irritates me. Get vaxxed, get boosted, sticker. Then you can put a sticker. You can go on Instagram. You can point to a sign and you can be a part of the cool club. Yeah, not so cool. I'll pass. Anyway, he has no business saying that to anybody. Honestly, it turns my stomach. Then he says, do it to take care of each other. Well, the vaccine doesn't prevent transmission. So you get the vaccine. You're not, it's not about somebody else. It doesn't work like that, Trudeau. You know that. Come on. You know that. And as far as the healthcare system, I love this one too. Don't be a burden on the healthcare system. Get your vaccine. Okay, so... First off, what about all the people that got the vaccine and had negative side effects and landed in the hospital? They exist. They need a voice. It's real. It happens. That's one. Secondly, if he's so worried about the healthcare system, is he going around to everybody who's obese? Is he going around to everybody who eats like shit? Is he going around to everybody who doesn't exercise? Is he going around to everybody who makes poor lifestyle decisions? There are attacks on the healthcare system. He's so worried about that. He's doing anti-McDonald's ads in his spare time? I don't think so. McDonald's in Canada? I don't know. McDonald's is everywhere. It probably is up there. I don't know. You know what I'm getting at. He's not doing that because it's not about your health. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if he cared about your health and he would be saying the decision to get vaccinated is up to you. I don't know your medical history. Make the best decision for yourself. That's what sane people say. He doesn't know. I love that too. The health. I love when they say, oh, it's a burden on the healthcare system. It's usually by somebody who's got like a Big Mac in one hand, like a diet soda in the other, hasn't exercised ever. And they're like, don't be a burden on the healthcare system. Smoking, you know, every now and then. Got a bottle of whiskey in the corner. Don't be a burden on the healthcare system. Get your vax. I got three boosters. I got COVID anyway, but it's fine. It's all right. Just stop. Stop. I could go on. I could go on. Bottom line here, not all politicians are bright. Some are bright and are agenda driven. Stop listening to them when it comes to your health. Stop listening to, I don't, honestly, stop listening to, to, to anyone. And also remember, politicians oftentimes get some money from, you know, the pharma, the pharma boys. So that's going to bother me always and forever. Again, again. Call truth what it is. Call reality what it is. I hate talking points. Weed out the talking points. Make decisions for yourself. Stop empowering these people to run your life. Comments, questions, Tyler. Uh, got a squeaky chair here. We're trying to. Talk uh, with he the has a chair. very squeaky chair. <laughs> uh, there were a few good ones in here. Um, Anyone you want to share is good. Aaron Randolph says Tyler also likes to wear cat costumes. So thanks for that, Aaron. Meaning you like to wear them? Yeah, I knew there was a cat in there somewhere, Tyler. I didn't want to say it, but... <laughs> uh, one guy, the, the slacker guy, says, I can forgive someone for not thinking to check a horse riding, uh, riding weight requirement. It was likely embarrassing and frustrating, and I get that. However, the horse's health is important. Um, yeah, no, that's cool too, right? That's a great point. Like, she, she may have been embarrassed. That might have been an embarrassing moment for her. Like, I get it. We've all had embarrassing moments, but... Honestly, I don't know if it was so embarrassing. Maybe if it was, I don't know that you would have had that reaction and like blasted it all over the internet and to your fault. I don't know if that would be the reaction of, of someone who was embarrassed by something. Maybe, maybe, but good point. Well, and there was another one that said uh, the body positive movement meets PETA. It would be interesting to see those two clash over this. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Catherine says people loved Trump before he became president. He also exposed a lot of corruption, so they had to get rid of him. Mm. Uh, another one it still amazes me that if you do a google search on certain topics you're literally forced to go through the mainstream media the same ones who made false claims for years to get the right answers and what's what's great is when i don't remember what it was but do you remember um one example was robert malone had uh, 
his theory, I, f- I forget what his theory is, but you, you uh, mass formation psychosis. Oh, That's yeah. what it was. You would Google mass formation psychosis and Google would say, well, we're still pulling the results on this. Mm-hmm. Else we're editing our search results for this. And it's people give me a hard time because I use DuckDuckGo. But it's like I'll put in the exact same phrase on Google and DuckDuckGo and get vastly different responses. Yeah, that's a, that's a good experiment, too, for people at home. You should try that. It, it is it is fascinating. I've I've um, I've noticed that sometimes I'll go to Google something for the show and I'm like, it's all one sided. Like you have to really dig. I actually have to put in like a recognizable publication. Like say, if I want to, I'll put a topic and then a conservative publication in order for that conservative publication to mm-hmm. even show up. Even though I know their traffic is amazing, you get like. It's all one sided. Mm-hmm. So you think about the average person at home who's not, you know, into all this stuff, goes to do a search and they think, oh, well, this is this is the news. Mm-hmm. This is the information. Mm-hmm. It's It's been a fun time to watch the like information misinformation battle. Well, do you remember when the Veritas busted the Google VP a couple years ago? Oh, saying, yes. We will make sure that this never happens again. Referring yeah. to Trump, uh, Trump's election in 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a good one. Julietta says, I'm also one who can't get the shot due to health reasons. Social media has been horrible. When you spoke out, you were like my friend that got me out of bed and helped me keep going. Thanks. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I shared that story was because I knew it wasn't just me. It wasn't just me. Um, that, that was, and when it started, truthfully, there was no mandate. So I, I was really just very innocently like, Hey, I'm, I'm not a candidate for this. Um, I'm medically advised against it. So I'm just not going to get it. And I just naively figured that would be accepted. That would be cool. And then the mandates rolled out and I realized, okay, there's a campaign here. I'm somehow the enemy because I'm medically advised against it. Um, And then I started to see, well, what about people who had go like, just don't want it to be honest with you. I had had COVID already. I, I I probably, I would not have gotten it anyway because I was like, I had COVID. I was fine. I have these, this immunity, I'm, I'm good, I'm okay. Um, but yeah, I, I'm glad to hear that. And I think people speaking out has made a world of difference. Always remember when you speak out about something, that's important to, for us all to think about, like you're, you're sharing something. I, I had a friend on um, social media that just shared a story of her experience with cancer and it was very hard for her to share that, but I commended her so much and I said, you know, there's people out there that are going through similar experiences that are gonna see what you've shared and they're gonna feel like a weight is lifted off them. Like, I'm not alone. I get it. Someone hears me. Um, and I noticed a lot of people with big microphones were silent on the back stuff. Either they worked for a company that was getting a ton of pharma money or they're a closet statist. You know who you are. Um, so that's that's it for comments. But okay. uh, just in case you forgot, maybe uh, Andres will pull it up. Um, here's Justin Trudeau in blackface. Yeah. Just, you know, it's always fun to remember. Just to end, end the show. Bully Trudeau. The beloved Trudeau. You can't have your guns, Trudeau. I tested positive for COVID-19, but don't worry. I got vaxxed, so it's, it's much better than it would have been because I'm a psychic in some way, Trudeau. Full of shit, Trudeau. Sorry how to say it. Thank you guys for joining us today. It has been an amazing first week. Deeply appreciative. We cannot wait to get back in here uh, on Monday. I'm going to be on PBD Podcast tomorrow. And it's going to be fun. We're going to light it up. So make sure you're there and uh, more fun stuff coming along the way. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can't wait to see you next week.